It's 3 a.m. and your children are safe and asleep. But there's a phone in the White House and it's ringing. Something's happening in the world. We are asked whether to give the President of the United States authority to use force in Iraq. Now, I believe the facts that have brought us to this fateful vote are not in doubt. But Saddam Hussein has worked to rebuild his chemical and biological weapons stock his missile delivery capability, and his nuclear program. He has also given aid, comfort, and sanctuary to terrorists, including Al-Qaeda members. Your vote will decide who answers that call. Whether it's someone who already knows the world's leaders, knows the military, someone tested and ready to lead in a dangerous world. This is probably the hardest decision I've ever had to make. Any vote that might lead to war should be hard. But I cast it with conviction. And perhaps my decision is influenced by my eight years of experience on the other end of Pennsylvania Avenue, in the White House, watching my husband deal with serious challenges to our nation. It's 3 a.m. and your children are safe and asleep. Who do you want answering the phone? Obviously, I've said many times that um, Although my vote uh, on the uh, 2002 authorization regarding Iraq was a sincere vote, um, I would not have voted that way again. We're sorry. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial again. I don't oppose war in all circumstances. And when I look out over this crowd today, I know there is no shortage of patriots or patriotism. What I do oppose is a dumb war. I know that even a successful war against Iraq will require a U.S. occupation of undetermined length, at undetermined cost, with undetermined consequences. I know that an invasion of Iraq without a clear rationale and without strong international support will only fan the flames of the Middle East and strengthen the recruitment arm of Al-Qaeda. History has proven our great dissenters to be right.